Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Public Finance. We have been learning about externalities. Today we are going to learn about Coase Theorem. Coase Theorem is the Chapter 5, Part 5. This is a private sector solution to externalities. Let's get started. So Coase Theorem has two parts. Part 1 says that when there are well-defined property rights... Well-defined property rights and costless bargaining, then negotiations between the parties will bring about the socially efficient level. So the role of government is very simply you just enforce and define property rights and then let the parties bargain. Okay, so this is called the internalizing the externality. What does it mean? When either private negotiations or government action lead to the price to the party to fully reflect the external costs and benefits of that party's actions. So basically either it's through cost theorem or government actually imposing tax and subsidies to correct the price and ensure that the production level matches the socially optimal level. Cost, let's go back to cost theorem. This is, for instance, uh, this can apply to negative production externality example. So you can give the fishermen property rights over the river. You can define the property rights. River belongs to the fishermen. Factory, steel factory. If you want to pollute this river, then you have to pay fishermen $100 marginal damage per quantity of steel produced so if you're not sure about the example i'm giving you go back and watch part one and part two of chapter five videos okay so private sector solutions to negative externalities so this is a causing solution to negative production externalities in steel market so quantity of steel price of steel the the story was that the steel factory produced steel and as a byproduct of production, they dumped sludge to the river and that hurt fisheries. Per quantity of steel produced, it was causing $100 per unit of steel produced. So we started with, we started with private marginal cost supply. This is the cost to the steel company and private marginal benefit, society, benefit to the society from steel production, demand also equals to social marginal benefit. Why? Because there's no consumption externality. Because there's production externality, social marginal cost is not equal to private marginal cost. It's equal to private marginal cost one plus the marginal damage these companies are causing. So the dif distance between Distance between the social marginal cost and private marginal cost curves is the marginal damage. The damage to fishermen per unit of steel produced. If the fishermen is assigned, fishermen are assigned to the property rights of the fisheries and the river, then fishermen can charge the steel plant $100 per unit of steel produced. This increases the plant's private marginal cost curve from PMC to PMC2. Interesting. Which coincides with the social marginal cost curve. So the quantity produced falls from Q1 to Q2. Why? Because now the social marginal cost corresponds to the pri new private marginal cost. The cost of producing steel just got $100 more expensive per unit of steel. Okay? So... The quantity produced will fall, and I'm going to show you something. Marginal cost curve, private marginal cost, social marginal cost, and social marginal benefit. Point B will be the social optimal level. And the social optimal level of production is actually achieved by assigning these property rights. This charge of $100 by fishermen to the steel factory internalizes the externality and removes the inefficiency of negative externality. So another option could be giving 
property rights to the steel factory. So what happens is that government says that this factory has every right to pollute this river. I know it sounds crazy, but you, you can do that. And then now fishermen have to pay the steel factory to reduce the production of steel by a certain amount for each unit of steel, the fisherman has to pay steel factory $100 for the right to fish in the river, okay? So through the process, but let's go back to the regular initial example. Through, the, through a process of bargaining, steel firm will bribe the fishery to arrive to Q2 socially optimal level. Coase theorem part two says that the efficient solution to an externality does not depend on which party is assigned the property rights. As long as someone is assigned to property rights, part one is operational. There are well-defined property rights and cost is bargaining. Negotiations between parties will result in socially efficient level. So one warning for you, if you're taking this public finance class, professors love to ask about cost theorem part one and part two verbally, like describe the cost theorem. So you may want to memorize these two parts. So the direction in which the bribes go does depend on the assignment of the property rights. However, if the property rights are given to the steel firm over the amount of steel production, and fishermen must pay bribes to the steel firm. Okay, so this is the example I was talking about. Problems with Causian solutions. This is also something professors love to ask. Number one is the assignment problem. Second one is the holdout problem. Third one, free rider problem. Fourth one, transaction costs and negotiating problems. Let's talk about assignment problem. It is really difficult it can be difficult to truly assign the blame it's hard to value the marginal damage of marginal damage of one unit of steel okay also steel factory can be like you know what we are not the only polluters here it could be some other factories or maybe there is a predator attacking the fish right so you, we don't know second one is the holdout problem arises when the property rights are held by more than one party. So shared property rights give each party power over all others. This can cause breakout in negotiations. So if 200 fishermen are, you know, they, they want to come together to, to negotiate with the factory. This is the factory, okay. 199 of them are willing to pay. But one fisherman is like, I'm not going to pay. So what happens? There's a holdout in this case. Let's talk about free rider problem. So when investment has a personal cost but a common benefit, individual will underinvest. So if steel firm is assigned the property rights, you are the last of many fishermen to pay the uh, cost of production or fishing. So the bribe will be larger paying for the bribe will be larger than the marginal damage you you were caused personally so let's talk about this free rider issue here's an example so let's say you want factory to reduce their steel production by 100 units of steel units each unit is costing you $100 per unit of steel to reduce. We have 100 fishermen. 99 of them already paid their $100. Okay. And factory got paid, right? This much. Great. $9,900. But one fisherman did not pay why because the water is already super clean okay 99 units of steel has been actually withdrawn all you have to do is to pay for one more unit to help everybody else right so you you have 100 units of steel reduced by the factory 
But you can choose not to do that. You know what? I'm not going to pay for it. It's already very clean. The water is very clean. So that's a free rider problem. You have probably experienced free rider problem in your group projects. Someone in the group sometimes not, you know, ends up doing anything. Let's talk about transaction costs and negotiating problems. Hard to negotiate when there are a large number of people on both sides. So when you have lots of people in both groups, you're going to incur transaction costs. In summary, in sum, the cost theorem is provocative, but not very relevant to many of the most pressing environmental problems. Please keep this in mind. And I'll see you in part six, where we talk about public sector remedies for externalities, which includes corrective taxation, subsidies, and regulation. So do me a favor and hit the like button on this video. So this video will be pushed in front of other economic students who are struggling with their classes or who want to get A's in their classes. Number two, subscribe to this channel so you will never miss a video from me. I'll see you later. Bye.